How many of you have seen the movie? <laughs> which movie? Bless you. Well, which movie? There's okay. actually two now, okay? For those of you that are my age and older, I'll let you guess it what that age is. Those of you my age and older would know the movie that is about three hours long and they normally play every Easter. Okay? Charlton Heston, The Exodus, The Moses, The Ten Commandments movie, right? With the wall and the water on either side. Those of you that are my age and younger will know the Disney rendition or the DreamWorks rendition of Prince of Egypt, right? Um, both of them show this amazing picture of these people walking through this riverbed with waters, walls of water as high as you can possibly see. We, we think we know what happened in this story, but do we really? The reading this morning, you, Scott, you were a great trooper on, on reading. He got, he got the reading, and then I told Julie, I said, no, we need more. Because it was only supposed to be Exodus chapter 14, verses 5 through 10, and then 14 through something, and then 20 through 29. But it left out all of these great verses and stuff. I need the clicker so, we can, so I can go back and look at some of these things. But this is a story we think we all know, because we've heard it time and time again. But the things that we forget about this story are, how did they get there to this place in the first place? Right? Last week we talked about Joseph and how Joseph was was thrown in a pit by his brother and sold into slavery and then went down to Egypt and got into to the, to the good graces of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh raised him up into his household. And any time that a nation would bless the Israelites, the Israelites would bless them in return, right? When Pharaoh blessed Joseph by raising him up in his household, it, the land of Egypt was blessed. God blessed it. But then what happened at the beginning of Exodus? I mean, you read at the beginning of Exodus is how a new pharaoh came to power that didn't know of the relation between the Israelites and the Egyptians that had been set up by the former pharaoh and Joseph because Joseph, has, Joseph had died. So this new pharaoh thought, oh, there's all these Israelites in the land. We've got to do something to make sure that they don't overtake us. So he put them into slavery. So now they weren't blessing them. So what was happening to Egypt? They weren't being blessed anymore. And so finally, after the plagues and everything happened, Pharaoh decided that he was going to let the Egyptians go. And our verse this morning started in verse 5 of chapter 14. And we missed the first four verses, which are just as important. I didn't make Scott read them, but I'm going to read them for you now. So, right? Because we think that they just fled Egypt and they were walking and they were just going. And they got to the Red Sea, right? There was nothing else that happened. They left Egypt, they walked, and they just got to the sea, and then God split the sea, and they walked across the sea, and they killed the Egyptians, right? That's what happened? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> Chapter 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back into camp in front of Pihatharon, between Migdal and the sea, in front of Baal Zephon. You shall camp opposite it and by the sea. Pharaoh will say to the Israelites, They are wandering aimlessly in the land, and the, and the wilderness has closed in on them. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, so that I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all of his army. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. God went to Moses and said, Turn around and camp. Stay for a little bit. And when they left Egypt, they left empty-handed, right? They left with only what they had. I see. No. No, they didn't. Actually, when they left, the Egyptians gave them stuff. They left with gold and silver and, and treasures, right? So the Israelites are now a free, rich people. And here they are, camped by the sea. And what do they do? They turn around and they look and they see the Egyptians are coming after them. So they do what they've always done. They cry out to God and they cry out to Moses and they're like, what in the world did you do bring us out here for? We're going to die. Were there not enough graves in Egypt that we couldn't have just stayed there and died there and ate what we had and lived the life that we've been living? But yet you've got to bring us out here so that we're going to be buried in the sea. Because here's the thing that we see. It's these verses right here. They cry out to Moses, and Moses says, just hold on, just look. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and see that the Lord will deliver you. 
See what God's going to do for you. Stand firm. Don't move. Right? The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still, Moses says to them. And that's where our reading was supposed to end. That's why I had to change the reading, Scott. Because I didn't get verse 15. Moses said to the Israelites, stand here and watch what God's going to do for you. Because God's going to take care of you. Now, don't hear me, get me wrong. God's going to take care of you. But here's the thing. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to move. See, God told them to turn around and camp. And the only thing that was between them and Egypt was now Pharaoh's army. And when they turned around and looked the other way, what did they see? The sea. And if we go this way, what's going to happen? We're going to go to the sea and we're going to march to our death. And I don't want to go that way. Because I don't want to die. The only thing that I see in front of me is death. But yet God says, get up and move forward. Trust me to know that I'm going to lead you to the place that you need to go. Trust me to know that you might look at that and not understand what's going to happen, but I've already got this all planned out. Trust me to know that I've thought this through and the plan has already worked and it's going to be taken care of. So the Israelites moved forward and Moses stretched out his hand and the water split. But can you imagine that? Bless you. A rabbi wrote a commentary on this story. And it's a commentary about a man and his son who go for a walk. And the man and his son, they go for a walk on a dark night down a narrow road, and so they walk single file. And the man, as he's walking along, he realizes that he, he hears a thief or a bandit in front of them. So what does he do? He puts his son behind him. And as they continue to walk, he hears behind him a wolf. So he wants to protect his son. So what does he do? He moves his son in front of him. And then he realizes that both the bandit and the wolf are coming at the same time. So what does he do? He puts his sons on his shoulder. Because he wants to protect his son. And the son through all of this is going, What in the world are you doing, old man? But the father is going to do anything that he has to to protect the son. No matter what's out there and what's coming. You see, because in our story it said that God always went in front of the Israelites when they left Egypt. But at this point when they camped at the sea, what did God do? He moved from being in front of the Israelites to being behind them. So that he was between them and the Egyptians. You see, the, the reason that we read this story, the reason we as Christians need to understand this story is because as some, some of the commentators I read this past week say, this is the resurrection story of the Old Testament. This is the story of new life in the Old Testament. This is the story of death because all we see in front of us is a sea that we're going to march into and die. But God says, hang on, I'm not finished yet. Moses lays his, his staff and they walk through on dry ground. Not muddy ground, not wet ground, not puddly ground, dry ground. Because God takes care of his people. You see, we don't know what's going to happen in our lives. There's been several times when I've lifted my family from place to place and moved them across the country. And I'm sure they've thought to themselves, what is the old man doing to us again? But it's a trust and understanding that no matter what we think we are facing or where we think we're going, that God has already been there. And God already knows what's going to happen. So we can, just like the Israelites, place our trust in God and follow after him. And when he said, when people are telling us we should wait and stand still and God is telling you to move, guess who you need to listen to? God. And you need to move and follow where he's going. Because God is always going to be with you. And God is always going to take care of you. That's the lesson we learned from the parting of the Red Sea. And no matter what we think is in front of us, God has already been there. And God's going to see us through. So follow God when he calls you to. And go where he's leading you. Even if you can't understand it. Because he's always going to be there to give you a hand up and the love that you need to get.